Okay, thank you for joining this lesson. We're going to discuss physics paper one, the KCC 2023. Number one, the question is asking, state one way in which physics contributes to the study of history. This is a, a form one topic. Let me, let me indicate as we go by, I should be indicating the form from which the question comes from. State one way in which physics contributes to the study of history. So we know very well there is what you call a relationship between physics and other disciplines. We say that uh, physics is related to history and government. And this is because in the study of physics there is what we call radioactivity. And under radioactivity, we study what we call carbon dating. So carbon dating is used by archaeologists to date fossils, that one enables the study of history. Therefore, historians will date fossils using a concept on physics called carbon dating. So carbon dating, you can just quote, carbon dating enables or is used by historians to date fossils. Fossils are the remains of uh, mankind, also the early man, people who lived long ago. So for us to know the dates or the years within which certain forces were living human beings, we use carbon dating. Uh, this is a concept in physics or carbon dating. Is a physics concept. That is uh, under the activity. You can check number two now. It is observed that diffusion in is faster in gases than in liquids. State the reason for this observation. It is observed that uh, diffusion is faster in gases than in liquids. State the reason for this observation. It's very true that gases diffuse faster than uh, liquids or than even any other state of matter. It should be known that uh, gases are faster due to their lower density. So gases of lower density gases of lower density they also have lower cohesive forces lower cohesive forces and a higher kinetic energy than liquids. So compared to liquids, Gases have lower density, so the particles of gases are lighter. Also, gases have a lower cohesive forces, so the particles which are having lower density are not strongly held together by cohesive forces. And finally, they have higher kinetic energy. That means with higher kinetic energy, they can move or diffuse faster than liquids. In number three, I can say that uh, this is from one, sorry, number two, which is from a uh, particulate nature of matter. The first one was a uh, introduction to physics. In number three, we are talking about uh, a boarding school as uh, two identical tanks, A and B filled with water. All the surfaces of, of tank A are painted silvery, shiny, while the surfaces of tank B are painted black. It is observed that for bathing in the morning, most of the students prefer 
fetching water from one particular tank. Identify the tank preferred by students in the morning. This is again from one work and uh, this is each transfer this is each transfer uh, when we talk of uh, the painting of these two tanks we should think about what we call absorption or emission of radiant heat so this is radiation now all right uh, if at night for example the two tanks by the time the sun is setting the two tanks are at the same temperature when they are let overnight to cool and lose heat energy uh they don't do so at the same rate there is one tank that is going to lose it at a faster rate and the one painted black which is a beam is a better emitter of radiant heat and also a better absorber of radiant heat therefore in the morning because they were all losing heat overnight, tank B, which is a beta emitter, will have lost a lot of heat energy and water there will be cooler than in B, than in tank A. Therefore, tank A will be preferred by students because painted silvery shine or shiny means that it becomes a poor emitter of heat and therefore it will be a bit warmer, relatively warm. Than B. Therefore, the tank is A. That is the one preferred by students. This is because uh, tank A, which is a painted silvery shiny, becomes It becomes a poor or poor emitter of heat than B. B is black, so it's a, a very good emitter of heat. The water in air will be warmer. The water in air will be warmer than the water in B. That is why students will prefer tank A in the morning to take shower. All right, in number four, a figure shows a uh, figure one shows a uniform meter rule of negligible weight pivoted at 40 centimeter mark. Then it is kept at equilibrium by a spring balance attached at the 100 centimeter mark and force F at the 60 centimeter mark. So we're having the diagram there. You have a force F at the 60 centimeter mark. Then there is a spring balance at this point. We are told that uh, the reading on the spring balance is one Newton determining the value of F. So for us to determine the value of F, then we are supposed to apply the principle of moments, which says that uh, for a system in equilibrium, the sum of clockwise moments about a certain point is the same or is equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments about the same point. Therefore, in this case, the force F, which is unknown, is responsible of clockwise moments because when F is applied at that point, it will cause a turn which is clockwise to this system. Therefore, we can say uh, clockwise moments, the sum of clockwise moments is equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments. Therefore, clockwise moments are due to force F multiplied by distance from the turning point, whereby because we have the pivot at the 40 centimeter mark, then F is acting at the 60 centimeter mark. This is going to be 20 out of 100 equals to the other force is a uh, one Newton multiplied by a distance of so the spring constant at uh, the spring balance is at the hundreds centimeter mark all the way from 40 centimeter mark so we will have a distance of 60 
a distance of 60. I'm dividing by 100 to convert to SI units. So the value of F now can be obtained in Newtons and F is going to be when we divide it through by, by two because the dividing factor which is 100 can cancel. Then we can take 60 out of 20 which is going to be exactly three Newtons. So the force F is equivalent to three Newtons.